Can you make Zipper faster? Technically, yes. Edit the zip.con file and change the connections to a higher number, say 10. But remember that this isn't a one-way street both ends need to play in the game. The server that you connect to needs to have additional connections. But if a server is full, then adding additional connections to Zipper may actually slow everyone down. Now update your newly installed OS. Yes, you still need to do that when you first install. Now if you're running Tumbleweed, you should zipper it up. Please like and subscribe. Zippered Up is your upgrade path to the next release version. On OpenSUSE Linux, a snapshot refers to a read-only, point-in-time copy of the file system, primarily managed by BTRFs, the default file system in OpenSUSE Leap and Tumbleweed. Snapshots are used for system recovery, rollback, and tracking system changes. How snapshots work, created by Snapper. OpenSUSE uses the Snapper tool to automatically create snapshots before and after system changes, such as package installations, updates, or administrative actions stored on BTRFS. Since OpenSUSE's root file system is BTRFS, it allows efficient snapshot management without duplicating data. Rollback capabilities. If an update or configuration change breaks the system, you can revert to a previous snapshot. Space efficient. Snapshots use copy on write, meaning they only store differences rather than full copies, reducing disk space usage. There are three types of snapshots. Pre and post snapshots, created automatically before and after software updates or system changes, Manual snapshots, created manually via Snapper, Snapper Create. Bootable snapshots. Using Grub, OpenSUSE allows booting into a previous snapshot to recover from a failed update. This one always bothers me. Set the host name. Why can't they ask for this at installation? Please, please, OpenSUSE, fix this. So just set your host name when you finish an install. If you don't get into your network or don't want people at work to know who just got onto the guest Wi-Fi, you don't need to set it. But it is a pet peeve of mine. New to OpenSUSE, setting up a network printer might trip you up. Change the zones. Yes, change the zones. To be honest, I usually turn off the firewall. I have a next-gen firewall at my house, so I am not really worried about my desktop PC. I think if you really want to jack with my Linux PC, you must be pretty bored with life. But for those that must have a firewall, open the ports for the printer to work. By default, the home zone has this setting already set up. OpenSUSE, why don't you have this set by default? My printer is an HP. Here is the setup on my test network. Yes, I have a test network, a IoT network, and the family network.
A great example of why you'd want to use a community repository like Pacman on OpenSUSE is to enable full multimedia support, codecs, proprietary formats, etc. Scenario, playing restricted media formats. By default, OpenSUSE does not include certain multimedia codecs, like H.264, MP3, and AAC, due to licensing and legal restrictions. If you try to play a video or music file in a media player like VLC or MPV, it might not work properly. How Pacman helps. The Pacman repository provides FFmpeg, GStreamer plugins, and VLC with full codec support, enabling you to play almost any media file. It also includes proprietary software and performance-optimized packages that are not available in the official OpenSUSE repositories. Change Pacman repository to be primary package center for the packages you install. Now that Pacman is installed, type sudo zipper in opi, then opi codex. Don't forget the S on the end, just like on the screen. A quick and easy package that gets overlooked. If you work from home, install the MS font package. If you use Microsoft Teams, Outlook, you will need this. Don't want to wait that eight seconds at startup. Change the bootloader time. I usually set it to one or two. Remember those snapshots that we looked at earlier? Well, this is where it comes into play, and if you set the bootloader to zero, you may not be easily able to recover your system with a zero setting.
don't like that single click to open something? I like the double click behavior, something small, but this helps with the frustration. Why does OpenSUSE not default to opening RPMs with Yast? Let's start by downloading Chrome. Then we can install Chrome via the RPM after we have fixed the handling of RPMs to Yast. Right-click the file, then select Properties, then select Change, and move the Yast selection to the top. Here are some common reasons why I generally prefer Chrome over Firefox. Performance and speed. Chrome is often faster, especially for JavaScript-heavy sites. Google optimizes it heavily for their web services. Better website compatibility. Some sites just work better on Chrome because developers optimize for its rendering engine. Google ecosystem integration. If you use Google services, Gmail, Drive, Docs, etc., Chrome offers better syncing and performance. Chrome generally feels more polished and modern compared to Firefox's more traditional layout. Chrome syncs tabs, history, and settings seamlessly across devices using a Google account. Now to be fair, Firefox has advantages like better privacy, lower RAM usage in some cases, and open source independence. Find your eyes tired at night while staring at the computer, or just can't fall asleep after playing games for hours at a time. Try the night color option for your monitors. Your eyes might like it. If you set the location to manual, you will need to choose your geolocation. Another must-have is a real audio player. I wonder why OpenSUSE defaults to VLC for playing music. Me, I prefer Clementine. There are others that I have tried. Clementine fits the bill for me. I see a lot of people wanting to remove Discover. You know, they like Yast on OpenSUSE. But I say, let, let's change Discover and make it just do flat pack installations. Um, just install uh, flat pack with zipper and then add the additional package called Discover backend flat pack. Uh, this package will allow Discover to manage flat pack applications and finally the flat pack repository, you need to add that also. Uh. The default task switcher in KDE is on the left side of the active screen. Really does not do it for me. I like the task switcher in larger icons in the center of the screen. Easy to change. Before and after pictures, I think this is an improvement. Here are a few more bonus or runner-ups that I didn't think were worthy of a spot on my list. Java, I am not a fan. 
sound issues, this might help. Search for sound open firmware. Decrease swappiness, I would not do this. This is for older computers, modern computers with SSDs, M2 hard drives. There is almost no reason to mess with this. Remember, this isn't a how-to video, it's just how I do it.